<laughs> Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. Now this is another of our service your own regulator series. And I want to I want to clarify that I am not advocating, I'm not promoting, I'm not even suggesting that you should service your own regulator. But number one, this is education. It'll teach you a little bit about how service of how the service of your regulator is, is, is done in a dive store. And for you guys that are really handy, who know what you're doing, maybe you've been servicing your own reg, maybe you're in a dive store, who knows? Maybe some of these ideas, some of these tips will help. So that's what it is. This is it just information, education, not a suggestion that you do it on your own. So, in the last one of these, or one of the prior ones, I showed you how to make an intermediate pressure gauge and an easy way to check your intermediate pressure. Now, what I suggested at the time was that you, have, you take your BC inflator hose, which is, should be on every regulator, or you can put one on for this sp specific purpose. But if you take your BC inflator hose, and then you make up an intermediate pressure gauge out of just a few dollars, $25 or less of materials, then you can put that onto your BC inflator hose and you can see the intermediate pressure of your regulator. Okay, so that's what I showed you the last time. Now, I need to show you how to adjust the intermediate pressure because your intermediate pressure can be adjusted. It needs to be adjusted when a, when a regulator is completely rebuilt, all new parts and everything, put all that together, and then it needs to be set so the proper intermediate pressure is being fed to the second stage. And there's a couple of different ways to do that, uh, and the different ways are related to different regulators. So some regulators just have different means. But before we go on to that, let me show you something else. I did in that last video show you this device which is a professional intermediate pressure gauge checker. That's a technical term. Professional intermediate gauge checker. <laughs> anyway, whatever you want to call it. But this is a device that most dive stores would have, and it has its a brass device with a quick release on it, and it has an intermediate pressure gauge on it. It's just a little more sophisticated than one I showed you. Between you and I, it doesn't do anything more. It's just a standard one of those cheap gauges mounted in a nice brass thing with the proper spigot to fit into your uh, in, into your LP hose. It does have on, on this end, it does have a lever which allows you to, you see what it can do? It can get rid of the intermediate pressure entirely or it can, what they call cycle the regulator. This actually lets the low pressure drop, come back up. You can do that many, many times. That's called cycling. And what that does after a reg's been, reg's been completely serviced, it helps the new parts to get set, to get settled in, if you like. It's sort of like brake, when you put new brakes on your car, you shouldn't use them too hard for a while until the new shoes and pads get broken in a little bit. Same type of thing. So you can cycle it like that. Well, if you have <clears throat> my little cheap gauge, my little $20 gauge, instead of the $125 gauge, you can do the same thing just by using the purge button on the regulator. So you're not, you're not missing anything by not having that expensive gauge. But let's talk very quickly about adjusting it. So now you have uh, your regulator uh, on, on a tank and you've looked at the pressure gauge and, uh, and, and the intermediate pressure is 100 and gosh, it's 150 PSI right on. And now for this particular regulator, the pressure is only supposed to be 140 PSI. However, as I mentioned before, it can be as much as 15% plus or minus, and that's, that's quite a lot. So 150 PSI is just fine. But if you did need to or want to adjust it, how would you do that? On most regulators, you will find on the first stage, you will find uh, normally on the end of the first stage, you will find some type of adjustment. I don't know if I can show you this one here, Kevin. Just let me shut this off for a minute. But I think I can. We're going to turn this towards Kevin. So on this particular uh, regulator, and this is not uncommon, you can see right there there's a slot on the end. And if you have a large screwdriver that fits in there, make sure it fits in properly so that you don't scratch the material, not like this one. There we go. And that, that turns. You see how it turns back and forth? That is the intermediate pressure adjustment. Technically, actually, what it's doing is actually pushing on the spring, and the spring in this particular case is pushing on the diaphragm, and then the diaphragm pushes on the needle on the seat and, and, and changes the intermediate pressure. Some other regulators are a little bit different, but let's just see how that works. So here's your regulator, and I've stripped this down, so we just have the first stage and the second stage, and then we have my, <clears throat> my quick and easy and cheap 
pressure gauge, intermediate pressure gauge on here. And now we're going to turn it on and let's see what happens, okay? So let's get it on here. Okay, there we are at 150. Now it's really quite simple. If you take a screwdriver, in this particular case, they're not all flat screwdrivers, and you turn that thread in, you're increasing the pressure on the spring. And that's pushing down on the seat. And see the pressure climbing. Now the pressure is up to, gosh, it's up to about 190. And you should be able to hear something now, too. That's right, it's starting to free flow, which is exactly right. If the intermediate pressure climbs too high, the second stage will begin to free flow. It will let off that excess pressure, which is good. That's what you want. You don't want the, uh, the uh, air to be cut off to the diver if the first stage isn't perfect. So now we'll back it down a little bit. Back it down to about there. They're free flowing a stop. And it works the other way as well. You have to keep re removing the pressure. But let's take this out a little ways. So now it's back to almost 150. We'll keep going out a little farther. Now it's down to 145. And you can keep on going. Go too, go, don't go too far because eventually that threaded screw will pop out. And it's, it's not under a great deal of pressure. It's not too serious, but just be careful. Now, now the pressure you can see is down to under 125 PSI. So it's really just that simple. With this particular style, you just turn that thread until you get the, the appropriate intermediate pressure. And I mean appropriate, meaning that the proper intermediate pressure for every make and model of regulator is set by the factory. And that number is determined by many, many things. The performance of the regulator, the components in the regulator, and, and the second stage design and so on. It'll vary uh, sometimes quite a bit. Intermediate pressure could be anywhere from 120 to 160, maybe more or less than that, depending on certain models I'm not familiar with, but typically it's around 135 to 150. Okay, now that's on that particular regulator. Other regulators are a little bit different. Here's a very common regulator, a brand that everybody knows, and it fits on there as well. But if you look on top and bottom, there's no slot. Ah, but there are a couple of Allen keys. And this particular and Allen keys or Allen sockets. On this particular one, at this end, if you put the appropriate size, looks like quarter inch Allen key into here, you can turn that back and forth. So it acts exactly the same as the one we just did. You turn that nut and it adjusts the pressure on the spring, which pushes on the diaphragm and raises or lowers the intermediate pressure. So this is another style. The only real difference is that instead of a screwdriver, you're using an Allen key to do that. Now I want to point out that there are some regulators, and here's an example. <clears throat> and you can look at this regulator all day long, and you won't find any kind of adjustment. You see, there is no adjustment. There appears to be a cap with some holes, and if you look through those holes, you can actually see springs, but there's no adjustment on this. There's no screw. There's no way to adjust this. You can't grab it with a pair of pliers, and, and that wouldn't be a very smart thing to do because this regulator is different from these other two. This is a piston regulator, and we've talked about this before. Piston regulators versus, versus diaphragm regulators. This is a piston regulator. It can't be adjusted. That's right. It can't be adjusted. Very, very few piston regulators. There are a couple over the years that did have a, a, a means to be adjusted externally, but very, very few piston regulators are, uh, have adjustment for intermediate pressure. So how, how is the intermediate pressure set? Well, it is set by virtue of the design of the components. Did you catch that? It's, it's set by the design of the components. So if you take this regular completely apart, all two parts. There only are two moving parts in there, the spring and the piston itself. And you replace all the O-rings and clean it perfectly and reassemble it properly and put this cap back on snugly the way it's supposed to be and turn on the air pressure, it'll be 150 or whatever the intermediate pressure is supposed to be. It'll be right on. It's designed that way with that cap and those threads and that piston It'll be what it's supposed to be. Now, very rarely, but occasionally, a piston regulator will show some variance. And if it is necessary in order to make that regulator work properly for the intermediate pressure to be adjusted, to, to, be, to vary a little bit, to bring it back into specs, then it can be done, but not externally. What the serviceman will do is he'll take it apart again and he'll put in shims. Years ago, they used to be metal shims, stainless steel washers, if you like. Now they're made of Teflon or some other polycarbonate material that doesn't deteriorate. And you put in very thin shims, maybe just one, maybe two, maybe two or three shims. 
so that the pressure is increased on the spring. So instead of screwing it in, takes it apart, puts the shim in, puts it back together. That will increase the pressure on the spring and increase the intermediate pressure. That's how that's done with the piston regulator in most cases for shims. If it's very, very bad, if it's a way off, then you simply replace the spring. The spring must be out of adjustment. So there you go. There's some ideas on how you adjust your intermediate pressure. Now, before I let that go, let me give you a bit of a warning. It is not uncommon practice for divers to play with their intermediate pressure. There's a mistaken belief. I'm going to say that again. There's a mistaken belief that the higher the intermediate pressure, the easier breathing your regulator would be. Not the case. It is not the case whatsoever. The intermediate pressure is determined by the manufacturer, the time of manufacturer, and the design of the regulator. And that intermediate pressure is the result of many, many different components. You need to realize that there are springs in the second stage and levers and lever height, seats, and so on. And if the intermediate pressure is not within factory specs, then the breathing will not be correct. Increasing the intermediate pressure, it may seem to make the breathing effort drop. You saw with this particular one, as I increased the pressure, began the free flow. Aha, that's easy. Not necessarily. So, no, don't be misled into thinking that if you increase intermediate pressure, your regular will be easier to breathe. You set the intermediate pressure, and then once it is set, then you adjust the second stage to match that intermediate pressure. And that's where the breathing effort is determined. The breathing effort is determined here not here. And one more. There's another mistaken belief. There's a mistaken belief that if you decrease the intermediate pressure, make it lower than what the factory specifications dictate, that it makes a regular less likely to freeze up in cold water. Now you caught that mistaken belief because that's a mistaken belief as well. Although that is a fairly common, there's a little group, not a group of divers, but there's a little a faction of scuba divers who do a lot of cold water diving who are under the impression that decreasing the intermediate pressure will lessen the likelihood of their regulator freezing. Sorry, wrong. In fact, decreasing intermediate pressure will actually slightly, slightly perhaps, increase the likelihood of a freeze up. I can explain that to you in technical terms sometime and perhaps I'll do that. But please, if you are going to do anything with your intermediate pressure, Make sure that when you're finished, it is at within factory specs. There's some variance there, but it should be at factory. Increasing or decreasing, either is not correct and can, can lead to problems. Small thing. Okay, that's it. How to adjust your intermediate pressure. We're going to go on in this series, and I'm going to show you the next step in this process, and that is how to adjust the second stage to match the intermediate pressure. We'll talk more about that a little later. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. See you soon.